All right, so in this video and in the next few videos, we are going to look at the kinematics of a rolling wheel. And we're going to do it in the context of a bicycle here. I like bicycles. Bicycles are nice and convenient and easy and intuitive. So let's assume the bicycle has a velocity I'll call V. And to be a little more specific, I'll say V in the I hat direction, where as usual, the I hat direction will denote the horizontal direction, J hat vertical. And when you talk about velocity of a bicycle, you're usually talking about the velocity of the rider on the bicycle, right? Maybe the, the velocity of the seat. But in this uh, video, we're going to think about the velocity of different parts of the bicycle, in particular points on the wheel. Let's take the front wheel and let's indicate some points here. Let's take a point down up there, down here, down there up here. So there's four points on the bicycle and I'll, and I'll label, label them A, B, C, and D. And given that our, our velocity of the bicycle is this V in the I hat direction, I want to find the velocities of these four points A, B, C, and D on that front wheel. Now in this video we're going to solve this problem uh, using what I call a calculation based approach. That is we're going to use our definitions of velocity and angular velocity on a bicycle and a rigid body involving vector cross products and we're going to work out these vector cross products to answer the question. Now if we're going to want to find the velocities of these points on the wheel what we'd like to do is relate them to the velocity of something that we know. And the, velo and the thing that we know the velocity of is the hub, right? The hub is this point right here where the wheel connects to the fork. And the fork right here is connected to the frame, and the fork and the frame are all one rigid body, assuming that we're not turning the, turning the handlebar. So the velocity of the hub is this V in the I hat direction. Let me, and this is handy because we can say the velocity now of any point on that wheel is equal to the velocity of the hub, which we know, plus the velocity of that point relative to the hub. Yeah, and then since it's a rigid body, the velocity of any point relative to the hub, well, that's even easier. Let me step back. That velocity of the point, in the point P relative to the hub, we can write as omega, angular velocity of the wheel, vector cross product with that position vector of the point relative to the hub, like so. And that's for any point. And what we're going to do is use this expression for point A, B, C, and D. So in particular, I want to start with point B down here. And the reason for point B will become apparent in just a moment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this expression over here that I have for any arbitrary point P and just write it for point B. So we get this. And now what we'll do is we'll, we'll write in some of the details. So velocity hub is just V in the I hat direction. The angular velocity of the wheel, I'm just going to write that as omega in the k hat direction. So we know this wheel spins within the plane, so it's either going to be in the positive k hat or negative k hat direction, out of the screen or into the screen. So I'm just going to call that omega right now, and omega is, is an unknown at this second. And then the position of b relative to h, what does that mean? That means if we're sitting on h looking at b, What's that position vector? So it's the position vector sitting on H looking at B. So the position of B will be this way. It'll be straight down. So position vector B relative to H will be the radius of the wheel in the minus J hat direction. Now let's work this out. So again, I got the V in the I hat direction plus now taking this cross product K cross J. What's that? Ooh, K cross J would be minus I, but I got a minus sign here, so this vector cross pro product should be omega times R in the I hat direction, positive I hat, right? Now the reason we chose point B here is because B is special. B is this point in contact with the ground. And we're going to make an assumption, as we do in most rolling problems, is that this wheel is just rolling along the ground in the normal way. In other words, it's not going to be skidding, it's not going to be sliding, it's not on, it's not on ice, it's not on snow, it's not slippery at all. So the wheel is going to be in contact with the ground and it's not slipping. So what one says is if we have roll without slip. So if we have roll without slip, something very special is happening. That point B, which is on the tire, 
at that very instant it is in contact with the ground, it must be adhering to the ground. It cannot be slipping. It cannot be sliding. So therefore, B has to have the exact same velocity as the ground at that one instant. When point B is in contact with the ground for that one instant, it must have a velocity of zero because the ground has velocity zero, right? Those two velocities have to match up. So what we have, velocity zero. Zero in the I hat direction, zero in the J hat direction. That point B, again, at that one instant, is not moving. If the velocity of B was moving, then that point B would be sliding on the ground. And that's what we're assuming does not happen. We're rolling without any slip, without any sliding whatsoever. So what this tells us is, if we look in the I hat direction now, that V plus omega R is zero. Oh, v is given, right? I told you what the velocity of the bike was. If you want, I can give you the R as well. So let's just assume the the R is given. Again, R is the radius of the wheel. So we'll just stick this out here. So the capital letter R, that's the radius of the wheel. And the nice thing about studying point B first, since it's special and we're not sliding, this tells us the angular velocity of the wheel. In other words, omega here is going to be negative uh, V divided by R. Nice, huh? V is a positive number. The bike is moving to the right. R is a positive number. That's the radius. Omega is going to be a negative number then, right? Which makes sense because we're talking about omega is a signed quantity. It's the magnitude of your angular velocity. Uh, the angular velocity was omega in the k hat direction. But since omega is negative, this angular velocity is in the minus k hat direction. Right? And if you use your right hand rule, you point your thumb in the minus k hat direction. Minus k hat is into the screen. So point your thumb into the screen and wrap your fingers around, again, your right hand, and that'll be the direction of rotation. So this is a rotation of the wheel going clockwise, a negative angular velocity. That makes sense, I think, I hope. And what we're going to do is use this angular velocity to find the velocities of the other three points, A, D, and C. We know that the velocity of point B is zero because the, the bicycle is rolling without slipping. All right, now we're ready to move on to another point on the wheel. I'm gonna choose point D next. Again, we'll use this expression for velo relative velocity of points on a rigid body. That is velocity point D. We're gonna relate it to the velocity of the hub. And you got this omega cross R. And we'll use our previous result. In other words, we'll use that the angular velocity of the wheel is minus V divided by R in the k hat direction. Again, this is a clockwise rotation of the wheel. So if we substitute values into this expression, again, velocity of the hub is V in the i hat direction. Uh, and then the angular velocity, we'll put that in there. But this time we've got R, the, the position vector is the position the position vector is D relative to H. So this is going to be if we're on H looking at D, so this is going to be straight up like this. There's the, the in the yellow here, that's the position vector of D relative to H. So this is a distance R, the radius of the wheel, in the positive J hat direction. So now I've got minus K hat cross J hat. And that's going to be in the i hat direction. So let's write this out. We got v in the i hat direction. So v over r times r, all in the i hat direction. So there's another v in the i hat direction. So my velocity at the top, that is at point, point d, that's going to have twice the speed of the bike, right? At point d, that this point right here, the velocity of that point d is moving to the right. It's moving towards the front of the bike but going twice the speed of the bike itself. So if your bike is going 30 miles per hour, the top of the wheel is going 60 miles per hour. And notice in this expression here, it doesn't matter what the radius of the wheel is, right? This can be a big uh, 700 millimeter wheel, or it can be a something of the, the size of a, a rollerblade wheel, and it still have the, the twice the speed of the bike at the top of the wheel. That's kind of cool, isn't it? And if you think about that, this is pretty pretty interesting. Remember, the, the speed at the bottom of the wheel is zero. The speed at the top of the wheel is twice the speed of the vehicle. 
So, you know, think about driving down the, the expressway in your car. You might be going 60 miles per hour. At the bottom of the wheel, the velocity of the wheel is zero. At the top of the wheel, it'd be 120 miles per hour if you're going 60. And think about that little point on that little patch on the on the tire here. It's going 120 miles per hour, and then a fraction of a second later, it's down at the bottom of the wheel and it's going zero again then it goes back up to the top and it's going 120 miles per hour again then back down to zero those are, those are some rather dramatic accelerations right kind of interesting I think all right so we've got the velocity at the top of the wheel twice the speed of the the actual velocity of the vehicle and in the horizontal direction so now we'll look at the points a and C and of course we've done this a few times already so we can do that we can write those expressions out rather quickly so we're going to write the velocity of A and the velocity of C relative to this point H again. The only difference between these two expressions is we'd include the position vector of A relative to H and the position vector C relative to H. The position vector of A relative to H, of course, is this one right here. The position vector C relative to H would be this one uh, over here. Therefore, when we write out these two expressions, we get something like the following. So both cases, we get V in the I hat direction, then we get the cross product. In one of the case for point A, the cross product was a vector in the minus I hat direction. In the case for velocity point C, this position vector is in the positive I hat direction. So really that's the only difference. And K cross J is, or excuse me, K cross I is J. I got a minus sign and a minus sign makes a plus. So this one over here for point A is V in the I hat direction. And this is going to be plus v in the j hat direction. Aha. Uh -huh. Interesting. This means that the velocity at point A is at an angle of 45 degrees. So my velocity at point A is going to be up and to the right, as I've indicated right here. Over at point C, on the other hand, what do we get? We get v in the i hat direction. That's for our hub velocity. And then this cross product is going to be in the minus j hat direction, right? k cross i is positive j, but I got that minus sign right there, so I got minus v in the j hat direction. So again, this is going to be at an angle 45 degrees, but this time the velocity is going to be headed downwards. So this time the velocity, again, I got something, in, I got v in the positive i hat direction, and then a v in the minus j hat direction. So over here the velocity looks like that, down and to the right. So there are my last two velocities. And if I put all, all four of them in there, again, the velocity of B at zero, the velocity of D was twice the speed of the bike in the positive J hat direction. So those are those four points. And look at those directions. They're rather interesting. And you should be looking at that. And we're going to talk about it a bit more in the next video, perhaps give a more intuitive explanation of why those velocities are the way they are. But there's our answer.